uh, most of the patients in the non-chest X-ray arm, uh, in fact, at chest X-ray, there was a major contamination uh, problem in this study, so there was no chance to demonstrate any benefit with uh, chest X-ray screening. So, uh, all uh, projects of screening were abandoned for 30 years, and in 1999, there was a very important publication from uh, Claudia Enschke, uh, which is at, uh, was at uh, Cornell uh, University in New York, and she published a study uh, called uh, Early, Lung Action, Early Lung Action Project. Uh, and uh, in this study, this study involved uh, 1,000 patients uh, who had low dose CT and uh, what was found was that uh, lung cancer was found in 2.3% of these patients and it was mainly early stages. Um, and so the conclusion of this study was that low dose uh, CT was able to detect lung cancer at early uh, stages. But the study was not randomized, there, there were possible bias and it did not demonstrate that screening allowed uh, to a reduction of lung cancer specific mortality. So uh, this is the reason why a second um, study was undertaken in the US. Uh, the study is the National Lung Cancer Screening Trial and I think it was mainly undertaken to demonstrate that screening was not efficient. And they found the opposite result. Um, the, the, the inclusion started in 2002 and, and um, the, the patients were followed up for seven years and in uh, 2011 uh, the results were published and it was demonstrated a 20% uh, redemption of specific mortality in the city arm. So it was a big surprise. And lastly, there's a uh, um, um, European study and um, the Nelson study uh, conducted in, um, in the Netherlands and in Belgium, and we are still waiting for the results. But this study was uh, uh, <coughs> different from NLST because the the, this um, screening program used uh, volumetric analysis of the nodules. So, <clears throat> to answer these two questions, I used some data from the NLST study, from the Nelson trial, and from ELCAP. And these were, um, we made um, a statement uh, in a French work group that was published in the uh, Annals of Oncology, and I'm going to use uh, some tables from this uh, paper. So, uh, for the question how, means what equipment, parameters and dose, uh, what reading modalities, uh, and what are the criteria for positive screen. So, what equipment, parameters and dose, um, Multi-detector row CT is the equipment which is required because it allows to acquire the whole lung volume within a single apnea. And we're supposed to perform, uh, to use thin reconstruction thickness. Um, it was uh, up to 2.5 mm in the NLST uh, study. And uh, while, whereas ELCAP and most of uh, and the Neston studies recommend uh, one millimeter thick uh, slice thickness. What about the low dose? There is no consensual definition, so we could uh, just mention that it is as low as reasonably <coughs> achievable. Uh, in the NLST study, uh, they used uh, 20 to 40 MAS. In the EL cap, they used 120 kV and 40 MAS. And in the Nelson study, it's interesting because they adapted the parameters to the patient weight and they recommended to use less than 50 kV, uh, no, uh, they recommended uh, below 50 uh, kilograms to use 80 to 90 kV. Between 50 to uh, 80 kilograms, 100 kV, and uh, 140 kV above 
80 kilograms. They also mentioned the corresponding CTDI uh, values, uh, 0 0.8, 1.6, or 3.2. And if we evaluate uh, the resulting dose in the NLST trial, uh, it is mentioned that uh, each NLST low dosity resulted in an average effective dose of 1.5 millisievert. If we convert that in DLP, it, it is um, to summarize, we can uh, only um, say that it is below 100 milligram centimeter, and uh, this need uh, we can compare this with the European. Um, uh, diagnostic reference level, which is currently 475 milligrams centimeter. So what are the reading modalities for screening? Um, do we need experienced radiologists? Do we need single or double reading? And what is the role of CAD? Uh, in the NLST, uh, readings were performed by radiologists who were approved to read for the NLST, so not everybody. Uh, in uh, international LCAP, uh, radiologists must agree to follow up nodules and to provide histology for highly suspicious nodules, but there, there are no other recommendations. Single or double reading, um, except in NLST, uh, which may be used expert. In on all other screening trials, there's a double reading. What is the role of CAD? In the NLST, interpretations were made by using subcopy display without computer assisted diagnosis. And uh, recently, there was a publication in European Radiology from the Nelson Group, which concluded that the sensitivity of nodule detection is increased with CAD, but um, there are some limits of computer-assisted detection because it does not accurately depict speculated lesions and non-solid nodules, and there is an increase of the reading time. This is here an example with the CAD from G that I'm using. Uh, the CAD did not detect this highly um, suspicious nodule, which was speculated. Since you, you, you point on the nodule, the system is able to uh, segmentate the nodule and give its uh, volume value, but it is not de de depicted automatically. And also this uh, non-solid lesion here, it was not detected. Uh, the problem with CAD is the false positive detections that can be very uh, numerous and you can lose a lot of time by, uh, because it's uh, necessary to check all the, um, the positive findings uh, made by the CAD. And uh, to um, avoid losing uh, a lot of time, you may um, select the size of the nodule that you want to detect. If it's uh, three millimeter size, there are numerous false positive, four less false positive, uh, and uh, five or six, you have less uh, positive findings to evaluate. And this is the conclusion of this paper from the Nelson group. Excluding small nodules reduce false positive detections by CAD to a reasonable to a reasonable value of less than two per examination. Uh, I would like to insist on the major role of MIP for nodule detection. Here there is a, a nodule which is very easy to detect, but there's also another nodule, and you could spend hours. Uh, looking at this image without seeing uh, it, and if you if you perform a MIP reconstruction, you will find that the nodule was here, because on thin slices it is very difficult to differentiate between a, a, a vessel or a nodule. But is it sufficient? I would like to uh, show you one of my mistakes. In this 
uh, CG, I missed the nodule, even though I used uh, a mid reconstruction. Can you see the nodule? That I did in the left upper lobe. It is here very uh, good. It is here. But I missed the nodule. And uh, the worst thing is I uh, still missed it at this stage. And why? The reason is I was evaluating this lesion uh, following radio frequency ablation, so I did not pay a lot of attention to the rest of the lung. And maybe I was tired, maybe I was not very concentrated, maybe I was uh, um, disturbed by many phone calls, I don't know, but I missed, I'm ashamed, but I missed this very obvious nodule. So, we're just humans, and so maybe we need CAD to um, correct our mistakes. Now, the criteria for positive screening. Uh, just a uh, background of nodule categories, there are two different uh, sort of nodules, solid nodules, you can see the vessel through the nodule, and non-solid nodules, pure ground glass or uh, part solid nodule. Uh, concerning solid nodule, remember that the vast majority are benign, few are malignant, and uh, the probability of malignancy mainly depends on nodule size. Concerning non-solid nodules, it's very simple. If they are transient, it's nothing. If they are persisting or they are CT follow-up, they are always corresponding to lung adenocarcinoma at different stage of evolution, uh, alveolar hyperplasia, in situ or invasive lung adenocarcinoma. So, what are the positivity criteria for solid nodules? There are various criteria according to the different screening studies. And what is important is to consider the proportion of positive screening according to each criteria. If you take the French study, the David Scan study, it's very bad because we considered all non-classified nodules and we had nearly 50% of positive detection. Very bad. If we consider an NST, it's better. It was only nodules above uh, um, reaching four millimeter in size, and still there were there was a 25% rate of positive detection. And so the best is the Nelson trial. They considered as positive either large nodules uh, around. Uh, 10 mm in diameter, or growing, fast growing nodules. They, for smaller nodules that they were uh, evaluating three months later, and they evaluated their doubling time. And doing this, they had few positive screening results. And what is very interesting is all from all these positive screening, there is a high proportion of, of uh, malignancy. You can see here. 38% of malignancy, whereas in the NLST it's only 4% positivity. So, the good criteria take the Nelson criteria. Large nodule, 500 millimeter um, cube, cube, or in diameter, 10 millimeter, or smaller nodule with rapid growth at three months follow-up, with doubling time less than 400 days. Some examples. This is one of my case. This nodule was evaluated later. If you evaluate the two images, you can't detect any change. The change in diameter was less than one millimeter, but if you use volumetry, you see there's a 41 increase in volume and this nodule was malignant. It's a positive screening according to Nelson trial criteria. So the good thing with volumetry it allows early detection of malignant growth. Another example, I had this patient uh, referred because of a lung nodule. Um, 
if we consider the diameter, it's 11.4 and then 13.4. Is it significant? Yes. We evaluated this in this publication. There is a variability of 2D measurement, but it should not be over 1.7 millimeter. So any change in diameter reaching 2 millimeter is significant. But you need to uh, measure um, the nodule Carefully, you have to zoom on the nodule and you have to perform yourself both measurements with the same way of doing it. And it was a PET positive lesion with no extra thoracic um, activity and the patient was operated and it was a lung adenocarcinoma. So, um, <clears throat> about the case, uh, it's a uh, quite large loculated nodule in a smoker, you can see here centrilobular emphysema, but the lesion was very stable, 2% change in volume, it is not significant, uh, which is significant for change in volumetry is more than 25%. So uh, one advantage of the volumetry is also the high neg negative predictive value for malignancy if doubling time is over 400 days or 500 days. We use, we use in this publication, we had this, uh, we used uh, 500 days for uh, upper limit. <coughs> um, another example, it is a positive um, screening according to uh, Nelson. But I would recommend to have at least one CT follower because this nodule was nothing. And the CT here was performed um, just one month later. And it is quite frequent in some COPD patients. They have abnormal bronchioles and they may have inflammatory lesion without fever and uh, typical signs of pneumonia. So, uh, my recommendation is to always compare at least two different cities, but not one year later to, to perform short follow-up. What about non-solid nodules? Um, it depends uh, on the screening studies. In the Italian, it was non-solid lesions um, of 10 mm, uh, different criteria in the EL cap. Uh, in fact, with non-solid nodule, they may be transient, as shown here. This is a um, um, part solid nodule, and you can see that it is resolving. Uh, this is another example. He, here you have the nodule, and on the CT follow-up you have nothing, so end of the story. Uh, what is uh, my question is, is it really um, important to wait for three months with the patient anxiety? I think that within one month, if it's going to disappear, it will have to disappear. And are antibiotics needed? I'm not sure. Persisting non-solid lesions, we have a study from Nakata, very helpful. Less than 5 mm, it is not uh, malignant, it's atypical alveolar hypoplasia. Above 10 mm, it is necessary at least in situ lesion, but in between we don't know. Anyway, these lesions are slowly growing lesions. They raise the question of potential overdiagnosis, and it's not a diagnostic problem, it's how to manage this nodule, the question. And this is one of my cases. I had this patient after an episode of uh, pulmonary edema. He had a cardiac insufficiency, and we noticed that there was an area of uh, focal uh, ground glass here, so we performed follow up, and this is one year later mm -hmm. 2002, 2003, 2004, and every report mentioned this non solid nodule showing a solid component which was increasing. And finally, the patient was operated in 2005 and it was stage one tumor, no lymph node um, uh, involvement. And you can see the very long doubling time here, it's nearly three years and 
um, here with uh, the increase of the sodium component, the doubling time was uh, shorter. But the main point is, are we going to take the risk of a surgery in a patient with a major cardiac insufficiency? And there are more probabilities that the patient would die from something else. And this is my question. Maybe radio frequency ablation would be, or cyber knife would be good options. Another example here, I have this patient with this um, CT, and the first question I, as I ask is, give me your previous CT, and the previous CT was performed um, maybe two years before, and you can see that within the, uh, this time, um, there was a very slight, slight increase in, in the diameter, and the doubling time was more than 800 days. So, anyway, because of the solid component, it's better to operate the patient because there's a risk of uh, lymph node invasion. And the patient had to be convinced that the surgery was um, necessary, that it was a malignant uh, lesion. This is the reason why I had to perform first uh, percutaneous biopsy. Um, and this is the problem with bilateral disease. The patient has this lesion, it's more than one centimeter, though. so it is at least in situ lesion, but the malignant, aggressive lesion that needs to be operated is this one, and because of the contralateral lesion, it's not a reason not to treat this curable uh, cancer, and the patient, eight years later, was perfectly well. So in summary, um, role of CAD for detection I would say yes, remember my mistake, but with adjustment of sensitivity, don't detect very small nodule, less than, less than 5 millimeters, and certainly uh, CAD and volumetry is very helpful for follow-up, and um, <coughs> you will um, note that I did not give any criteria for benign lesion, I just evaluate how the nodule behaves over time, uh, meaning uh, CT follow-up, but we have criteria suggesting the nodule is benign, especially concerning per peripheral and uh, juxtaposal nodules, we know that there are intra-pulmonary lymph nodes, or nodules with intra-nodular fat, anyway, these lesions will be stable at three months, so just remember, three months volumetry, and that's it. In conclusion, how thin slices on multi-detector CT with a low dose less than 100 mg centimeter. Uh, reading is uh, made on native images and MIP images and uh, use uh, double reading or single if you're an expert, but even though you're an expert, maybe a uh, computed AD diagnosis is helpful. What is a positive screening? It's a large nodule, which is not resolutive, or a growing nodule with doubling time less than 400 days. Uh, persisting non-solid nodules over 10 mm of a solid nodule are cancer lesion, but what should be the reasonable management, I don't know. Just to finish this very sad case, this is the city uh, in a female patient, 40 years old, non-smoker. She has stage 4 disease because this is a cancer and this was confirm, confirmed to be a metastasis by thoracoscopic resection. And because we have PAX system, anytime I see such a case, I look on the back, PAX, and what I saw was this. Oh, Three years before, she had a CT performed for P suspicion. The nodule was mentioned, but the patient was non-smoker, and the question was, is there a P or not? And so no follow-up was performed. So my recommendation is on your report, you need to mention the nodule follow-up management, indicating that following recommendation, this nodule should be followed up at three months or one year, or but you have to write it down on your report, and this is very important. 
Thank you.